Welcome back everybody to the self love series. Before I get into it, make sure you are subscribed or you are following on any podcast platform. Today is episode four and I sit down with Leah Kafusi where we talk about her experiences in running in beauty pageants. Um, we talk about the negative criticism and how she overcomes self doubt as well as her why and motivations in doing these pageants. She has an awesome call to action that I hope you'll stay tuned to apply to have you better start your self love today. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Okay, so we are gonna get straight into it with Leah. I'm so excited, don't be nervous. Um, before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel um, and follow us on any podcast platform so you can get updates on the upcoming episodes, but we're gonna get straight into it. So the first thing um, I'm gonna ask you is what made you want to join beauty pageants? I remember when I was in junior high, there was a boy in my class, his sister won Miss Pacific Islander, and we were mm -hmm. like 13 at the time. And we were all talking about it at my house, and I just remember telling myself, like, I'm gonna do that when I'm, when yeah. I'm older. And then from then on, I totally forgot about it. Uh -huh. um, and it wasn't until I graduated and realized that I needed help to go to school was when I started looking at all the resources that were available to me because I wasn't the best at sports. I wasn't like the best singer. My grades were good, but they weren't like amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I needed help somewhere. Um, and when I looked up the pageant and it said like, this is a scholarship program, that's when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try this. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and so was it something at all that when it came down to it and you were like, okay, I'm going to try this, did you have like any nerves about it? Were you nervous? Like, because that's, I mean, in itself, just saying beauty pageant, which I don't know if they even call them that anymore, if it's just pageant. But if you think about like the history of them, it is, I, th I think what people think about is just like beauty. So is it something that like intimidated you? Were you nervous at all? Have you always had like pretty strong self-love that it wasn't something that you were like hesitant at all about going into, if that makes sense? I was super hesitant to go into it. I was looking for every other option to go to school other than that, but that was mm -hmm. literally like my last resort. Right. Um, and so the first feelings I guess I would say that I had was I felt inadequate, unworthy. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, there's so many beautiful girls coming into this pageant. Mm -hmm. um, I knew a few of them already. And so I, w I was super hesitant to do it. Um, and when, when I was going through the motions of starting to do the pageant, um, I remember I was telling my family, I was like, I'm gonna run in a pageant, and all of them just laughed at me. And oh, they were no. like, you're gonna do a pageant, are you sure? Like, maybe you try next year. <laughs> and like, granted, I was a di totally different person in high school. And so I was like, I ran upstairs and I just cried. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, man, you know what? They're right, like, I'm not gonna do this. Mm -hmm. um, who do I think I am trying to do a beauty pageant? Like, what in the world, Leah? And um, I remember my dad, he, he found out I wanted to do it. And so he called me that day and he, he was like, Leah, are, are you gonna go to the meeting? Cause there was a mandatory meeting and it had to be that day. And I found out about the pageant two days before. Mm -hmm. um, and he asked me if I was going to do it and I was crying and I was like, no dad, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. Um, I'll just try next year if anything. Um, and then he, he was at work and he was like, Leah, get ready. I'm going to come and pick you up Aww. and you're going to go. And I was like, I don't want to go do it anymore. And I'm crying and it's in an hour and there's traffic. Um, then he called my mom and he was like, this is something that she really wants to do. And my mom was like, really? Um, since when did Leah want to do something like this? <laughs> and then that's when her and my sister came and they're like, Leah, get ready. We're going to go. And I was already so hurt. Um, inside and yeah. I already felt inadequate and things like that um, 
but it was already too late. They are they they made up their mind, so I had to make up my mm-hmm. mind. And so we got in the car and we went, and all of the contestants were there, and I was I was so scared. I remember walking in. I was trying to wipe like the fact that I was crying right before off my face. Um, and when we walked out, I told myself I wasn't gonna do it. I was like, no, this isn't for me. It's not my thing. Um, but my sister and my mom were like, Leah, I, I just have a feeling that you have to do this and you're going to do it. Um, and from then on, we did it. We worked for it and yeah, it, the pageant was amazing and I, I actually won. So it oh was really gosh. good. <laughs> awesome. So how many have you been in now? And when was that one? Like how old were you on your very first one? I was 18. I just okay. barely gradu- graduated high school. Um, I graduated in May and then the pageant was in July. Oh wow. And then a whole your reign lasts for a whole year and so from two, for 2017 I was Miss Pacific Islander and then in 2018 I had to go run in Miss Utah and I didn't place in Miss Utah but it was like one of the best experiences I've yeah. ever had. Um, and then 2019 I ran in the Miss Zion pageant mm-hmm. and there was 25 girls. It was my second local pageant ever and I placed second Mm -hmm. which I was super surprised about um and then now 2020 I'm at Miss Miss Valley (laughs) yay and what is the upcoming pageant that you have that you're doing is that for Mrs. Utah again Mm -hmm. so it's (gasps) Miss Utah for America and I'm super excited for it oh so amazing so exciting and I love that you're Miss West Valley (laughs) um so with this pageant now so that's was that this is your fourth Mm-hmm. Is that right? So your why of starting it because you found it as a resource to help you with your education, mm-hmm. is it still the same today? Do you feel like your why has changed at all or does it still remain the same? My why has totally changed. I feel like at first I joined for school and for for it to help me. Um, but now, after I got that voice to help the community and things like mm-hmm. that, it totally changed my mindset on things that I didn't like around me. Um, And it inspired me to change the things that I wanted to change. And so I guess my why now would be to inspire people, Mm -hmm. um, especially our youth, because again, I was super quiet in junior high and high school. I had no kind of self-love. And then now I'm in all of these pageants. I love Mm -hmm. myself. And I feel like if people understood the things that you're capable of, if you believe in yourself, if you love yourself, everything around you will change. Like Mm -hmm. my whole entire life has changed because I decided to try. And um, just looking at the things that I've been doing, I can really see the American dream as well Mm -hmm. that my parents worked so hard for here in this country. And I I don't know, I want to change the community, Mm -hmm. especially the city that I love. So I'm really excited. That's so awesome. I love that you say that. Um, It made me think of several different things. So I'm like, hopefully I remember after to talk about, but I probably won't cover them all. But um, I love your why. I mean, that's my why of why I'm doing now to help inspire. Um, I saw a quote like this past week that said something about um, when you feel like you've been given something, um, you then are obligated to go out and give it to other people. And so that tied in with what you said, like self-love changes everything. And I love that so much. I feel like once I kind of felt self-love for the first time, um, which was a few years ago in working with the youth, um, that's what I realized. And like, I felt that way after like so many problems, regardless of what they are, like whether it's problems of the world, personal problems, I honestly feel like self-love would fix those. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like if people truly understood it and applied it in like the healthiest form that it is, I really think it could solve so many issues. Um, and so when people say that there's only two people that have said that to me without me ever saying it, which is you. And then one of my other young women, Mia Mulani. Um, so I love that you said that because I truly feel that. And I think it's so important for you to pursue your why for so many reasons. Not only like what you said, you almost, it would almost be a disservice for you to not do it when you feel inspired and your parents doing all that they did for you to be where you are now, that when you feel called to be in these types of platforms, 
it would be a disservice to not do it because you have the inspiration behind it that you have and you have the team behind you that supports you the way that you do. So it's just like, why wouldn't you, exactly. you know, but it is so scary. And I think that's important for people to realize that naturally stepping into anything new, um, new positions, new spaces, you're always going to not feel good enough. Um, but you just have to remember that spark that first ignited the thought to do it. I honestly think that like the very first prompting you get for something is from heaven. And so I feel like a lot of times you have to revert back to that, like, just remembering that you're supposed to do it for a reason and you just have to push forward through the fear um, and do it. So I love that because that's everything basically that you've said. And also what I love so much about you, even though we don't fully know each other yet, um, just from when I've seen you at different places and following you on social media, I think that you are needed more than ever at this time. Because I think girls, I have the biggest place in my heart. People know, I feel like I talk about it all the time for the youth right now and the younger um, women of today because I feel like the standard of beauty is what people, the superficial one that people think of when they think of beauty pageants, what's on movies, mm -hmm. um, TV shows, like those types of girls. Um, but they're oftentimes what I think is ones that they're just following the world to try to win that crown, you know, but with you, I feel like I love that you've always maintained, um, your morals, your values, and like modesty as well through the way that you talk, through the way you hold yourself, the way that you dress. And I love that so much. Like I, when I become a mom, that's what kind of girls I want my, um, girls to look up to and see like girls like that they can still pursue and do all these things their dreams um and still be virtuous women of god you know so i love that so much and thank you for doing it even though sometimes it's scary and you don't feel good enough you're amazing and so needed not only doing it for i mean as a daughter of god and for um people that have the same values but also for like where we both come from, West Valley. And a lot of times, I know even in the industry that I've worked in for years, it's always had the negative stigma. Mm -hmm. And people are always kind of surprised when they find out that I live in West Valley, but it's like, okay, it's, there, it's just one type of person like looks like or acts like they come from West Valley. And I love it here. That's why when I, even when I moved out of home, I still wanted to stay living here because I love it. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I just went on a ramble, but I just love so much what you're doing. Influencers of faith. That's what I'm about. That's what we need. Um, but with that being said, um, what do you find has been the hardest part for you um, in all of this? <clears throat> and how do you deal with, have you had negative criticism given to you? Um, how do you navigate through that and the self-doubt? I feel like the biggest issue I've had was trying to keep that the mental state clean or like the mental state pure because if your mental state isn't there mm -hmm. then everything else is just going to keep falling um when i when i won my first pageant um i felt like social media just blew up and one thing about me in high school i didn't have any social media i didn't even have a facebook i only yeah. had a snapchat that i had like my church friends on mm -hmm. which was it yeah um and so when i joined the pageant they said that we had to one of the, re not requirements, but one of the things that you need to be good at in these days is social media. You need to learn how to work it and work it to your favor. Yeah. And so I, I hopped on Facebook, I hopped on Instagram. Um, and when I did that and won the pageant, there was such a negative, a negative blow that came to me. Like I was receiving all of these messages from anonymous people saying all of these things. Um, sorry. <sighs> So like something that I've always been insecure of was like obviously my looks, you know, and in the Polynesian culture, like all of the girls are like thick and beautiful, they're like skin. And then here I come and I was like super skinny. Um, I was darker than the other girls. And so I was always like, uh, you know, and people would say like, oh, how is she going to represent our people if she doesn't even look like it? Mm -hmm. um, which got me because I was like, 
saying that to yourself and having other people say it to you was totally different. And people from your culture. Yeah, like the people that I was supposed to be representing, it was like they didn't want me to represent yeah. them. And then all these pe- all these girls in the pageant, they don't look like me. And mm-hmm. so I had to really take a step back and be like, what do you want to do? And I remember there was um, a time, sorry. You're good. I got a message from this random person and it was like just going off on me. Um, and I didn't tell any of my siblings, I didn't tell my parents, but I went to the bathroom and I just cried. And I called my director and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like yeah. This is not what I signed up for. Um, and I don't want to represent these people. And then she was talking to me and she was like, Leah, you, you don't understand what, what you're able to do. Like, you didn't win for them. You didn't win because they approved of you. You won because of your heart. Mm-hmm. And looking back, like, I know I wasn't the prettiest girl on the stage. I wasn't the most talented. But the one thing that I did do is I left my heart out there. And when I finally understood that I won no matter what, like I won fair and square, that's when everything got so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the effect that I had like with our own people that hurt me. Yeah. And then going into the, pa- the actual pageant, it was a whole nother world. Like all of the girls, they were from like Provo, they're from Layton, they're right. from all of these like high up places, yeah. Orem. <laughs> and then I come in from West Valley and I'm like, hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> and there was, I think my year, there was only two other colored girls. Um, and so even then it was like, I was ostracized. I felt like there was so many amazing girls, but I remember like some of them, there was one girl and she, when she found out I was from West Valley, she was like, oh, so you're from the ghetto. Oh my gosh. And I was sitting there in the dressing room like, she did not just go there. <laughs> she did not just say that. <laughs> um, and just so many, so many things. Um, I had to relearn how to walk. I had to learn how to speak properly and be ready to present my beliefs in a way that people would accept without creating all of this drama. Yeah. Um, and so there, there was a lot to learn, mm-hmm. but I think those trials turned into my biggest testimony. Like at that point when all of our people were like hating on me, um, I think that's when I, learn to love them the most and then all of the events I would go to I was like no I I love being Polynesian now I love I have most pride for being Tongan Mm -hmm. um and taking that love for my people into this pageant where I was the only Polynesian Mm -hmm. it was such an honor for me and it totally changed my life and my outlook and I think that's when it inspired me to keep doing pageants specifically for all of our girls Mm-hmm. who don't have that self-love, all of those girls that don't have any dreams or inspiration to be more than what society labels us mm-hmm. as. Because like when she called, like when that one girl called me ghetto, I was like, that's how you see people from West Valley. That's how you mm-hmm. see our Polynesian people. Exactly. Um, because that's how you're seeing me and I represent them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so putting all of this light into our city into our culture mm-hmm. brings me so much satisfaction. It's like that part of me that's saying, ha, you thought, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's really just what I want to do. But just making sure that my mindset was okay and that I stayed healthy mentally, mm-hmm. it changed the way I glowed. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just the thing that you have to realize with criticism. Like they're always going to judge you whether you're amazing at something or whether you're not, people have something to say. Mm -hmm. Um, But it just matters what you're saying to yourself because you talk to yourself the most, you know? Yeah. So that's that's what I would say. (laughs) Oh, you're amazing. Okay, so you had mentioned going into that second pageant after winning, is it Miss Pacific? Mm -hmm. Um, And getting all the backlash and the negative criticism from Polynesian people. But then going into the next one, um, you were able to then be in the space where you could love our people even more because you were representing them and representing um, the city that we come from. How were you able to do that? Because I think people watching this, um, even not, you don't have to be in a pageant to be able to relate to this, but you'll have times where there will be people that for no reason are hateful and mean to you. 
Um, and you have to figure out how, because I think a lot of times we're so blinded by that anger and hurt that we don't see that it's blocking us from moving forward and being our highest self in whatever we have ahead of us, you know? And we can't blame the people for doing that because we can only control mm -hmm. ourselves. We can't control people's opinions and thoughts. We can only control ours. And so until we figure out how to get past um, that negativity and that hate, we're going to stay where we are, you know? So for you, how were you able to let go of all of the messages and comments that um, your people were giving you? Like one of the biggest lessons my parents taught me was you can't hate someone for something they don't understand that they're doing. Like you can't pin them that on them. And so with all of the negativity that I was receiving, it's because they didn't know me. They didn't have a chance to get to know me yet. Mm -hmm. And if I were to go onto that stage and not represent them to my best, that wouldn't give them any other reason to love me. I wanted them to show, I wanted to show them me. And so the best way to show them me is to act like how I would. Um, and like, I say that, but it was not easy. Right. And I don't wanna like make it seem like saying yeah. like that's the easiest thing in the world because it wasn't. Um, but I just used all of that, all of the words that they said and all of the things that um, were, was stopping me, I used it as my biggest motivators. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when people start hating on someone, it's because they see something that they don't like about yes. themselves. And so if I'm able to take all of that, go over there and turn it into something good, maybe then it'll change their outlook on themselves mm -hmm. and on all of what I'm doing and on me. Yes. And so I, that's what I would do. But you really just can't hold someone accountable for things that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's how I just moved past all of that. Love that. Um, yes, because I think a lot of times we expect like Polynesian to Polynesian that we are all raised the same. So you should all understand the same, but it's not the same way. Everyone's household's different. Mm -hmm. Some people have learned the same lessons as you, as you, some haven't. And so I love that you brought that up because that's so true. We have to, and it all goes back to getting out of our own head of like assumptions that people should know how we are. They should know our heart. Mm -hmm. So why would they say those rude things, but they don't. So kind of in what you said, it motivated you to show them like, if you knew my heart, you would support me in doing this because you would know where I'm coming from and the love that I have for our people and where I come from. So I think that's super important because in a different way, um, I feel like I relate to you. Never was in a pageant before, but I think just growing up being half um, was one I feel like was a strike against me <laughs> in like kind of the Polynesian community with girls. Um, and then also I just think my looks just automatic automatically made girls write me off as I thought I was better mm -hmm. and I was stuck up and I was a hoe or like I'd been with all these guys, like rumors, things like that, that were insane to me. But I feel like, uh, I mean, it took me a long time to realize and get to the point like of what you said at where you had to get to. But at the end of the day, it came down to the same thing. Like I just had to realize like they just are saying that because they don't know me yet. And people project their insecurities with themselves onto other people. And if they knew my heart, like I, without sounding conceited, like I honestly feel like if people really get to know me, I don't see how you can't like me because I'm a pretty yes. easy person to get along with, mm -hmm. you know? And I know I have a big heart. I know I'm a genuine person. So at the end of the day, I just had to realize like, it's nothing personal. They just don't know anything more and they're going through something right now and they're just projecting. So I love so much that that was your experience and how you got through it, because that's also a topic I've wanted to talk about on this series. And it just organically came up as how you moved past the hate. So again, amazing. Um, so I think with the call to action that I end every episode with of something that people could try to work on, um, with yours, after kind of what we've discussed, what do you think would be your advice to your call to action through what you've been through of what somebody can do, um, to try to strengthen their self-love? Do you think it would be about what we just discussed or where do you think's a good starting place for someone, 
um, based on your experience that they could start practicing now? I think I would say it would have to be like the biggest thing for me was would be your dreams. Um, a lot of the times we don't go for our dreams because we don't love ourselves enough um, and we don't give ourselves enough credit and we don't think we're worth it. But once you realize that you are worth it and that you deserve the love that you keep giving everyone else, um, all of your dreams become a reality and they become they'll become more than dreams. They'll become your goals and then they'll become your reality. Yes. I love that. And I honestly too think that the inspiration we get to pursue those dreams, I think based on our religion, I think that it is inspired um, from God. And I feel like with that, those things that you're passionate about, you already have all the talents and things that you need to pursue that. You just have to get out of your head and just do it because you have everything you need essentially to do it. It just comes down to you putting in the action, like taking that step and just starting it and just get letting, out of that box. Right. Of doubt and limiting yourself to only being enough for something smaller. You know what I mean? So I love that. That would be our call to action for this week. Um, and so going into the next one, I heard, I don't know, hopefully my sources are right, that you rent out dresses mm -hmm. that you've used previously in pageants. Is that what they are? Yeah. And so you rent them out to girls for school dances, things like that. Can you um, tell me about that and how that came to be? Mm -hmm. What made you even think of doing it and how it works for those that are interested? Mm -hmm. So we have a whole entire dress rental. There's about, I would say there's more than 200 dresses just at my house. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yours? And they're not, they're not all mine, they're oh, different sizes. Oh, and you collected sizes. some. Mm -hmm. So it started because of the pageant. Like, again, I got so many blessings from doing the pageant. Yeah. But I was able to get in contact with so many people who inspired that. And my family has always talked about doing it. And so, like, I started out with a couple of dresses. Mm -hmm. And then um, I met this girl and she gave me all of, like, she gave me tons of dresses. Mm -hmm. And so I took that in. And then the one who really supported it the most and the one who runs it so perfectly is my mom like yeah. she is her own businesswoman she is so good yeah. I need to take notes <laughs> but my mom has gone out she's gone to sales and everything she's gotten so many beautiful dresses yeah. of all sizes um, and the reason what the thing that makes us different in my opinion is one we're located in West Valley um, and two we make it so that it's affordable for all girls um, and when I say affordable, I actually mean like affordable, yeah. not affordable. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because when I was in high school, um, I, I almost didn't go to a dance because I didn't have a dress and, I, and dresses aren't cheap. And then I have three older sisters and when they were going to dances, it was so hard to find a dress that, mm -hmm. was, that made you feel beautiful, that was modest mm -hmm. and that was affordable. Yeah. Um, and it's... It's so hard to be in high school and not have like that princess moment, you know, that right. moment where you, like you feel your best when every other girl is feeling their yes. best. And so that's why we've we've put the prices to where it's affordable for everyone, especially girls who are financially unstable. And it doesn't even have to be only for prom. It's for like if you need a dress for a pageant, mm -hmm. come over. If you need a dress for a wedding, I've had so many people message me about dresses for like their dances like hulas and things like mm -hmm. that and so it's really just for yeah. whatever if you need a dress and one that's affordable just come on over yeah so what made you i don't know if it was you and your mom what made you even think to like start doing that as like a hustle with with me it was basically because i in high school i went to two dances and both of those were so hectic because it was so hard to find a dress for me and a, to find a dress that was modest and mm -hmm. a dress that was affordable. Um, and so I remember my sisters and my mom, we were running around everywhere trying to find a dress and um, for my first dance and we finally found one and it was so expensive for one night and not even a night, it was like three hours. Yeah. Um, and then the second time, everything was so crazy. It was so close to graduation and I actually went dress shopping with my brother. 
-hmm. And he was, he was so confused. He was just sitting there like, Leah, I don't know. I <laughs> just go find one. Right. Um, but it's just that struggle and that uncertainty I didn't like in high school. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to eliminate that entirely yeah. for any other girl just because I know what it feels. I get the struggle. Mm -hmm. um, and then my mom has always had that hustle in her. And she's always... She's a stay-at-home mom, but she's always been that businesswoman, and I look up to her so much. Yeah. I don't know how you could have so much drive, um, and she has, like, all these kids that are crazy, except for me, <laughs> but that's when, I guess that's when it started turning into a hustle because of my passion for that, mm -hmm. and then my mom's outlook and the things that she's been through. Like, she knows what she's doing. When we put that together, it created this amazing dress rental yeah. Um, that I love and it helped me with my pageant so not yeah. like now when I need it when I want to go to a pageant Just go in the garage find right. a dress grab it. That's so good. great. So how can people? Um, that this is news to that. They didn't know about that before. How can they find? Um, so that? we're working on the social media aspect of it mm -hmm. right now um, But you can honestly DM me you can DM okay. my mom anything like that okay. like We'll have my at there, but yeah, yes. just send me a message. So great. I love that so much. Using the resources you have combined with your passions and motivations to then make money. Love that. So we are just wrapping up now. We're going to do just the rapid fire um, end section. So I'm just going to ask you three different self-love questions and just give me whatever your answers are. So first one is your top positive affirmation or self-love motto. Mine would be this quote that I read, and it's, um, it's your story, so feel free to hit them with that plot twist whenever. Love. Um, what do you love most about yourself? I would say my drive and my mindset. I got into the habit of not letting anything that anyone says stick to me too much. So, so good. And then your favorite form of self-care? I would say grabbing a bunch of snacks, driving up to a view, and just sitting there with my music. Yes, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much. I know I've already said it all before, but you are truly a blessing and I support you 1000%. I'm honored that you even are here with me today to talk to me. Um, but the work that you're doing is so important and I know it's not easy. And I know that, I mean, it's confidence in general. There's going to be times where you're filled with it and there's times that you're not. But in those moments when you're not, know that I'm cheering you on. There's so many people that you don't know of that are as well. And you're such an inspiration to us all. And the women, the girls of this time and this generation need you and who you are. So I just appreciate and love so much that you're just showing up as being who you are and not conforming to the world. So thank you for doing that work. You. You're amazing. And thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and we appreciate it. See you next time.